Welcome back to Homegrown Passion. In today's video, I'm going to give you an update on all my farm market produce I have growing here in the greenhouse in the high tunnel. Doug's going to talk about his tomatoes and lean and lower, and he's also going to be working on his wood miser. So stay tuned. So here are my green beans for my summer market. They're doing really good. I think I'm going to have a few pounds for me before the market starts. Here are my vine ripened tomatoes. Well, I should say Doug's vine ripened tomatoes. He's the one that takes care of these. This year I'm doing something a little bit different with the basil. I always used to cut the basil and put it in a one ounce package and sell it that way. This year I'm just going to pull the whole plant, save me some time, and then the customer will get a little bit more basil to use. So here I got some little ones growing. Oh, got some lettuce over here too. So here are the lettuces I have growing. This is Green Star. And like everything else in the greenhouse, it's small, 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 and then like a week before you're supposed to harvest it, it like blooms and gets huge. So these guys have another two weeks here in the channel, so they'll be perfect for my market. This right here is Skyphos, and then I have some red Salanova oak leaf, some Muir, some Bib lettuce, Romaine, green Salanova oak leaf, and then I think this is, let me double check here, Fusion. And Fusion is a really good seller. It, um, a cross between a leaf lettuce and a romaine. So there's some of my lettuces I have growing. Watercress is really a favorite at the farm market too. A little bit warm in here this past couple weeks, so got a few flowers on it, but those are edible. And then next to it, Swiss chard. And then little wren, which is a mini bok choy. And that's another really big seller because that's really versatile. You can cook with it or you can eat it raw. So they'll be ready in here in my two weeks. Here's the red and green oak leaf. Like I said, past, this is where I put a red leaf lettuce in there and a green leaf lettuce seed together. It really makes an attractive head to sell at the farm market. Now this here is a spring mix. It's actually called Five Star from Johnny Seeds. And it's another popular one because it's really a nice and tender lettuce that you can grow. Love all the colors together. Here's my job this morning. I harvested all the endive I had in for my CSA program yesterday. So today I'm going to clean this all up, get all the roots out, and get this ready to plant again. Here's a little update for my next week's CSA program. This is leaf broccoli. Now this one I don't cut, or I cut it, I don't harvest the whole plant. So it's kind of like a cross between kale and a broccoli flavor. It's very flavorful. I like to uh, put it in pastas. Here's another popular item at the farm market, arugula. Now this will be ready later on in the market season, and this is a Napa cabbage I do. So here's my nursery channel. These guys have to get into the uh, channel, so when I get done cleaning that area where the endive was, these guys will go in there. And I got some more going, and then I have some more stuff for my CSA program. So it's kind of cool. The nursery channel's all filled up. So here I have my cucumbers that are going to replace uh, the beans I pulled the other day. So I'll have cucumbers for my summer market. I also seeded some microgreens for the farm market. It's probably time for me to uncover them, see how they're doing. No oh, nice. This is one of my favorites, this is radish. So it'll definitely be ready in my, for my market in a couple weeks. I only did half a tray of that. And the other half I did oops, was cilantro. And it's not um, germinated yet. Cilantro always takes a long time. So there's the radish. And then I also have some pea shoots going. I think I'll leave them covered just for a little bit longer. And then I have some broccoli. I'm gonna leave that covered for just a little bit longer too. Well, I'm finally getting around to lean and lowering the tomatoes. 
If you've noticed, we're having a little bit of an issue on the tomatoes. The leaves are a little bit of light green. And so we calibrated the pH controller on the Guardian. And we found out that the pH was too high. And also our EC was too low. So we've readjusted that and we've recalibrated everything. And so we're going to let it go for like a day. And then I'll show you an update on that the proper settings for the tomatoes but yeah they kind of got away from us i've been working on the high tunnel so much that i haven't really been putting too much time into here so i've got to get the rest of these lean and lowered and i've been kind of trimming off the bottoms but i got to clean up these tomatoes and get them back into production and i know everyone's going to ask why the leaves turn light green if the ph is too high and it's just because the plants can't take up the right nutrients and so this is what happens to them. The tomatoes still look good, and it's probably only been a couple of days, but our pH calibration went off, and so we should, probably should have done that a while. We're gonna have to take better care of that. And we're also gonna have to do that over on the strawberry side too, because we're gonna have to just watch these, these levels more. We've been letting them bounce up and down, and that's probably not a good thing. So lean and lowering is not my favorite thing to do in the greenhouse. In fact, it's probably my least favorite thing to do. Uh, just because you got to climb up and down this thing a hundred times not that that's a problem um, I usually use stilts when I do this but I decided I didn't want to get them out just for this run I'll wait till this side of tomatoes gets taller and then I can put the stilts on and do all of them but yeah lean and lowering is not my favorite thing to do it's just I don't know not so fun I have this little bag that, little tool bag that I got a long, long time ago. And I just keep the clips in here and so when I lower it, I can kind of move it and then slide it down. That's it. So I wanted to show the peppers real quick. I've trimmed them up. This one kind of fell over, so we're waiting for him to come back up. This one's doing really good. And this one. But look at this pepper right here. It's huge. These are all colored peppers. And they're doing really well. So we've been getting a lot of comments from Facebook and emails and some on YouTube about our formula for the tomatoes. And you know what the formula is and everything goes to the dosatron for the tomatoes. And we've got two rows of tomatoes. And then in the back row, we've got all of our English cucumbers and our Asian cucumbers. And that row will keep in cucumbers. This row we've got, Katie right now has got her beans and I've got a few pepper plants. These are colored peppers. And I just wanna say that everything is running on the same nutrient formula. There hasn't been any changes. And so I just wanna show that these peppers will do fine on the tomato crop um, or the tomato formula that we have. Same with the green beans and same with the cucumbers. So this isn't a big thing that you've gotta worry about. Just put the plants out Get the nutrition set down right that you want to run EC and pH and just let it go and they'll be fine. And since they're all vine crops, you can run them all on the vine crop formula. Well, it's a perfect day to cut wood with the sawmill today. It's kind of cloudy, a little cool, uh, breezy, and it's just perfect for cutting wood. So today, um, I've already cut some two by fours. I used one log and I'm, I cut, I don't know how many two by fours over there, probably 20. Uh, two by four by tens and uh, the other thing I'm cutting right now with this cant is I'm cutting one inch boards that are 10 inches wide and this will be the base for the bags to sit on and then I'm going to build the same kind of sawhorse um, stands to hold this up so yeah that's what I'm doing today uh, so we've gotten some comments about what we do with the slab wood that I get off the mill. This is the slab wood. I usually stack it up and then I'll cut it up into um, manageable pieces and we'll use it to heat the greenhouse in the winter time. So nothing goes to waste here at Bradwood Farm. So I was wrong, it's not 20, it's 17. So I got 17, two by four by tens. This will give me plenty of wood to make the stands for the strawberry grow bag system that we're gonna install, so. So I know Katie does the updates in the greenhouse. I'll show you the update in the high tunnel. 
Strawberries are going crazy. Lots of strawberries. Nothing's ripe yet, but everything looks really good. I still have to drop the nutrient system for the grow bags for the peppers and the tomatoes, but they're doing good. We're just watering them with the hose and everything's looking good. So I still have to get these hung up with the strings, trellis them up. And don't forget, I know a lot of people have asked, but we top dress the tomatoes and the peppers with fertilizer. So even though they're getting the same nutrient formula as the strawberries, with the top dressing it brings up the EC enough that they really do well. And these are my paste tomatoes that I'll make sauce with this fall. So I hope you liked today's video. If you do, please like and subscribe and write me lots of comments. Write Katie lots of comments and we'll see you next video.